Howdy, howdy. How's everyone doing? This is my not so secret but kind of secret stream. I totally should have uh, made an announcement on Twitter or something, but I didn't do that because I'm a goof. <laughs> but yeah, um, hello. We are we are having a stream today, and it's gonna be great. Um, I've got a couple of uh, visual novel dating sim type things lined up. Um, also, a secret third one, <laughs> a super secret extra option, um, which I'm kind of on the fence about, but we can check um, later how how that is, um, depending on how long we want to go today. They shouldn't take too long. One of them is definitely like less than an hour. The other is like two-ish hours, I think. I, I tried to look for short stuff because I didn't want to like only do part of one. I just kind of wanted to do something simple. But yeah, we are we are playing the games today. We're playing the feud, except not actually the feud. <laughs> so yeah, hope everyone is doing well. Technically, tomorrow is Valentine's, but when this is up on YouTube, it'll be Valentine's, so it's fine. Um, totally intentional, I promise. Um, yes. <laughs> oh, you know what? I should. I'm gonna uh, pardon me while I freak out of existence for one second. Um. I might as well put the, the hand tracking on, because why not? <gasps> Since, you know, it's a good day, and I'm not going to be doing a whole bunch of, like, intense ultra action gameplay. I might as well have the, the tracker on, you know? Whoop. And then we're going to go crazy again for two seconds. Badeep. Alrighty. Yeah. Yeah. Let there be hands. Oh. <laughs> so yeah. Um. Let's. Why don't we uh switch on over to the game screen while I also still adjust myself fifty billion times? It's fine. <laughs> There's no end to this resituating. But yes, it's been, you know, so long since I last saw people. Oh. Uh, okay. Okay, I thought I... Please. Let me run. Prevented an unrecognized app from starting. I swear I was able to start this. Fine, we're doing this. Bypass. Run anyway. <laughs> Ugh. Doesn't need to do that now, does it? <clears throat> one more time, one more time, fine. There we go. Oh gosh. Oh, this is loud for me. Not bad. Uh, da -ba -da -ba -da -ba -da. Going to the game screen. Why is the sound not going where I tell it to? Oh, I see. Properties. Come on. Oh dear. <laughs> the sound isn't coming through. <laughs> I want it to though, so this is Frustrating. Output to this one, perhaps? Nope.
Hmm. Please, please just capture. <laughs> or if I do this. Yeah. <sighs> Sneezing. <laughs> Anyway, it's it's the Todd Howard you cannot play forever. <laughs> My heavens. Come on, come on, come on. Just this, just do this for me. <laughs> oh, okay, that does that. Helpful for me. But man, come on, why won't the sound go? I break everything. <laughs> Interesting. There, put it there. Nope. All right, well. Interesting. What if I just... Oh, it's trying to pick up something now. Oh gosh, no! <laughs> Something's messed up here. Okay. Sure. I guess inputs got messed up somewhere along the way. Anyway, it can be heard now, yes. Yes. Okay. We're, we're going in. <laughs> I love tech issues. Oh yes, also, um, stream info. Let's see if this is in the thing. You cannot play forever. All right, let's get into it. I had taken the short walk from my house to the local GameStop. It's all Skyrim is what this says. <laughs> New game I'd been wanting to get had just came out. And I want to make sure I got my grubby little hands on it. What the heck? Why is it all Skyrim? Well, heck, and I guess I'll just get this then. I haven't actually played it yet. Hey, is that a copy of a uh, Skyrim I see there? Uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, that was a bit weird. My name's Hod. Hod Towered, by chance. It's really like Skyrim, you see, and I love to see people throwing their money at me. I mean, playing it and loving it as much as me. Okay, I'm gonna go and play my games. Can't let you get to that, but before you go, just be sure to get the very special edition when it comes out, okay? Yeah, sure, man. Who the heck was that? <laughs> that was Todd Howard, you dumb... You dummy? Well, whatever, I'm going home. Well, I had fun playing last night. But what should I do today? Um, hmm... You know what, let's get another game. I know I was just here yesterday and they literally only had Skyrim. But if I figure I went to a different one, they'd have some new stuff. What the heck's this guy doing? Is he replacing every game with Skyrim? Hey man, what the heck? Wait. What? Is that Todd Howard? I'm sorry, but you've seen too much. Todd hated that. <laughs> whoa, 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 chill out. You've seen too much. <laughs> Bad end. <laughs> Alright, we've taken a short walk. Why is it all Skyrim? That was Todd Howard, you dummy. Can we woo him?
What should we do today? Park. All right. Uh, save. Sure. <laughs> I don't know if we're gonna need saves, but too bad. It's really nice out today. I think I'm gonna go walk around a bit. Oh, sorry, I didn't see you there. Are you okay? I'm gonna do one thing. Let's see here, additional settings. Don't capture the cursor, just that it's less in the way. <laughs> okay. Are you okay? Yeah, but you should probably watch out next time you go for a run. Yeah, I'm really sorry about that. I'm gonna make it up to you. Coffee? Oh wait, it still shows up. Cool. Uh, sure. Todd. Name's Todd. Sure, Todd, I'll meet you there. Great, see you there. Man, he looked really familiar. That was Hod Towered, you dumb... You dummy. <laughs> hey, so what can I get ya? Oh, you don't have to pay for it. It's the least I can do since I knocked the heck out of you with my entire body. After we got our drinks, we sat down and talked about whatever came to mind. Jesus, coffee is expensive. I can agree that five dollars is pretty expensive for what you get. You know, you get those like little itty itty bitty cups. Whoop whoop whoop. Like like that big. And then all of a sudden it's like 20 bucks. <laughs> uh, but you know what isn't? What's that, Todd? The Fallout 4 season pass on Steam! Gets you all the Fallout add-ons. Automation, Wasteland Workshop, Far Harbor, Contraptions Workshop, Vault Tech Workshop, and Nuka World $70 worth of content, all for one great price. Cool, man. Anyway, this coffee sucks. So Todd, what do you do for work? Well, I work on video games mostly, but I do some freelance on the side. Video games. Wait, is he? I had fun today. If you'd like, I could make you dinner sometime. Tomorrow night, maybe? Oh, uh, sure. That'd be great, Todd. All right, here's my address. See you then. Save again. <laughs> All right, Todd's apartment should be around here somewhere. Here it is. Oi. That smell it smells like a middle school locker room in the woods. <laughs> ah, you must be the Fallout and Sky... You must smell the Fallout uh, copyright and Skyrim copyright candles. For only $25 a piece, you can enhance your VR experience with brand new 40 candles. Wow, you really like those, huh? Of course, they help satisfy my hunger. Excuse me? Food's done! Satisfy my hunger. What's that supposed to mean? I hope you enjoy. It's it's raw human. Wow, Todd, you really are a good cook. Where'd you get the crabs from? Those are locally sourced mud crabs. I got them myself. But hey, if you want to hang out again sometime, here's my phone number. Oh, thanks. I should get going, though. It's kind of late. I'll call you later. All right, see you later, Beth. I've hung out with tw <laughs> Twad. Todd quite a lot these past few months. We went on a picnic once. I wish that I could have seen what that said, or what the book was. I found out that Todd was, in fact, Todd Howard, director, director and executive producer at Bethesda Game Studio. Another time, we went to a museum. We had a lot of fun, and Todd knew quite a bit about the art on display. The water park was my favorite one. It's a little strange when Todd refused to swim uh, in anything other than his button-up shirt. But it was still a great day. I mean, hey, listen, some people don't like showing their body, and that's fine. <laughs> Hasn't been that long since I met him, but I know myself growing closer to him every day. Beth, my job is taking me to E3 this weekend in LA, and I have a plus one. <gasps> Would you like to come? No. Todd, I've only known you a few months, and you know, that's a really big trip. Sorry, but I don't think I should. Todd hated that. I see. <laughs> Come on, Skyrim, let's go! 
I never heard from Todd again. Guess he found love in Skyrim after all. No E3 for you. Alright, fine, we'll go! E3! Whoa! I would love to. Great, I'll come get you tomorrow to go to the airport. Alright, I'll see you then! Alright, all packed and Todd should be here anytime. You know, I love my, uh, fancy hotel room that I live in. <laughs> oh, he's here. Better get going. Hey, ready to go? Yep, let's get going. Looked like a little Fallout guy. This place looks so big. Well, I've got to get ready. You can sit at the front, okay? we Will do. Good luck out there. Ah, <laughs> oh, this place is huge. I say a second time of the night. Looks like it's about time for Bethesda Showcase to start. Better get seated. Wowee, there's a lot of stuff coming out, huh? It's almost been an hour already. Will you please welcome my very good friend, Mr. Todd Howard? <gasps> it's hit! <laughs> <laughs> We know that most of you came here for one thing. Thank you. People sure do seem to really like him, even if it is for the memes. Open the volume just a pinch. It starts with a map of the world <gasps> that glows in the fucking dark. <gasps> the Elder Scrolls blades, huh? Seems like it's a new mobile game. You can play the entire game in portrait mode. That one was extremely important to us. You can play it however you want. You need a free hand. <clears throat> so hold your coffee. What do you? Degenerates. This next one is the one you keep asking about. Wait. <laughs> Elder Scrolls. AGAIN! <laughs> What's it gonna be? <laughs> it's all we've ever wanted. Skyrim for the fifth time. <laughs> the Elder Scrolls 6. <laughs> and everyone in the audience cried. And clapped. Crowd goes insane. Todd looks like he's glowing up there. He's absolutely, uh, you could say nuclear. <laughs> okay, actually, now I'm really done. <laughs> Just want to thank you all for your time tonight. Time you spent in our worlds. We'll see you out there. Thank you so much for joining us. Have a good night and great E3. Oh, that was almost two hours long. I better get going. I'm B. Hope you liked the showcase. I did, though I have to admit I'm pretty tired. Oh, well, I'll let you rest, but wanted to give you something real quick. <gasps> Elder Scrolls 6. We don't have a cover yet, so I just scribbled on it with a sharpie. A white sharpie. Wow. For the PlayStation 4, my favorite console. <laughs> PS4 was actually pretty good. Oh, holy crap, this is The Elder Scrolls 6. I open it up and... Wait, this is this a used copy of Skyrim? Yeah, it's my used copy of Skyrim, but why put a, it as Elder Scrolls 6? Well, if you just re-release Skyrim again, people wouldn't really like that much. So I ported my files into TES 6 while no one was looking. So it's Skyrim 2? Yeah, pretty much. Wow, that's... Kinda smart, actually. I mean, people are probably gonna be angry, but still, they won't care after a while. As long as they buy it, it's fine. Well, I'll let you get to bed. Alright, we have learned he is a snake. I'm kidding. <laughs> I have some things I still have to do, but good night. Thanks, Todd. I had a good time today.
Good night. E3 went by quicker than I thought it would. We saw and did a lot that weekend. Seeing Todd on stage in his element was the highlight of the event for me, truly. Amazing. <laughs> what a spectacular... <laughs> well, you ready to go? Yeah, let's go! Todd drove me home from the airport. We played I Spy on the way back and it was really fun. I spy something that isn't Skyrim. I also spy something that isn't Skyrim. <laughs> Thanks for driving me home, Todd. It was the least I could do. Well, I should probably go get unpacked. <gasps> could do. Uh, I. <laughs> I leaned in and we kissed. I. Can we? Talk inside. <gasps> Is it gonna DTR? Todd comes in and takes a seat on my bed. Wow. My beautiful, definitely not a hotel bed. <laughs> and says something I still don't fully understand. I... I'm a god, Beth. Wait, what? I know this is hard for you to understand, but... I... am a god. Whoa, wh what the... I, I don't understand human emotions very well, but... He grabs my hand and places it over his heart. It's hot and his heart is beating fast. It feels warm right here. He lets go and I feel my face heat up. I, I don't... I know this is a lot to take in. I don't usually find myself in this position. Never, actually. I like to mingle with humans every now and then to better understand them. I don't usually stick around for long, a day at most, but I couldn't leave this time. A day turned into two, a week into months, and now we're here. <gasps> I don't really understand, but I don't expect you to, but there's three of us. Three. Three gods. There's me. Jeff Kaplan <laughs> and Gabe Newell. <laughs> okay. Gabe and Jeff tried to kill me. They almost did, in fact. But I was able to hold on to my physical form. And as I am now, Fallout 4 and Skyrim are the only way I can gather enough power to maintain it. <laughs> Wait, Fallout 4 and Skyrim? What do they have to do with it? The sales of our games and hours played are how we get our power. You don't pray, you play. <laughs> that... Wow. It kind of makes sense now. With Skyrim, I mean. This year's E3 led to massive sales of Skyrim and Fallout, enough where I can go into my god form again. I finally have enough power to get rid of them, once and for all. But I need your help. Moral support, mostly. I feel like I can actually do this, with you by my side. I... What? What should I do? I mean, we know the answer will probably be help him. I, I can't. I can't help you. I don't want any part of this. I don't understand any of this. I'm... I'm sorry. <laughs> if you won't help me, I can't let you leave this room. Todd, wait, I... Perish. We got zap fried. Then perish. <laughs> What should I do? Help him. I... I'll help. If it's something that important to you, then I'll help any way I can. Thank you. We'll get those degenerates. Together. Todd got up from the bed and moves a little closer. I can feel myself moving towards him. 
<laughs> Why is that a photo for us? <laughs> Todd whispers into my ear. You've got a season pass to my heart. Only a season pass, not an annual. Not a... Oh. Todd kisses me this time. I close my eyes. <laughs> and savor the moment. So romantic. I linger a moment before slowly pulling away. We'll start tomorrow morning. I'll come get you to plan the details. Uh, all, all right. I'll see you then. My love. I still feel the pressure on my lips, and I think I <gasps> like it. Todd came and got me, and we went to the coffee shop to plan our assault. Our first target is Jeff Kaplan. No! Not Jeff Kaplan. He made Overwatch good. <laughs> Lead designer of Overwatch. Blizzard, huh? Isn't that in California? Yeah. Looks like we'll be paying Jeff a little visit. We'll ambush him outside when he leaves for the day. Sound good to you? As good as it'll ever be. Alright, let's go. <laughs> the heck? How did we... Benefit of getting some of my powers back. Teleportation gets kind of easy. Teleport you know what? I'm not even gonna ask. Wait, there he is. Try and stay quiet, alright? Jeff passes by us and Todd springs his attack. What the heck? I thought you were dead! Next time you try and kill someone, Todd punches him straight in the face. Oh, you know what? Here. Do I have a... do I have a punch? I have a that. <laughs> You might want to make sure they're dead. <laughs> I won't make the same mistake you did, Jeff. Wow. <laughs> that... That went smoother than I thought it would. Although, we should probably get out of here before someone calls the cops. How, how would a gun kill a god? <laughs> Maybe it's a god gun, who knows. Come on, Beth. We're done here. Uh, yeah. I'm coming. Wait. Turn around and Jeff is slowly getting up, and he looks pissed. You shot me. You ever. Beth. Stay back. <laughs> Jeff lunges forward. And Todd does the same. While wow, all these people in the background sure had a uh, moment. I- Holy crap. This is so surreal. Two gods are actually fighting. Right in front of me. Jeff throws a punch at Todd and Todd blocks it with his arm. This is a very ultimate showdown. Of ultimate destiny. Todd roundhouse kicks him right in the chest. Punting him into the sun. <laughs> Jeff burns up in the atmosphere. He's dead this time. Really dead. I... I'm sorry you had to see that. That was sick. How the heck do you even do that? We're, uh, pretty strong. We're really done this time. Let's get out of here. We need some action sound for this. Jeff's dead. That can only mean... Gabe won't be like Jeff. Gabe is much more powerful than he'd ever be. We'll have to plan this one carefully. What the? Todd opens the door and... <laughs> He's here! Long time no see. Why not? Todd! What the heck, Gaben? Jeff's dead, Todd. I wonder how that happened. You wouldn't know anything about that, would you? <gasps> Quip. Todd! If I just stand here, he'll... he'll die! What do I do? Um... Both of these seem like terrible ways to do anything. Um... Attack. I... I have to do something. I lunge at Gabe, surprisingly knocking him on his ass. Todd steps up to Gabe. Degenerate. Todd takes out his gun and shoots him once in the head. It's over. Finally. It's finally over. 
Todd turns around to face me. Beth, thank you. I don't know what would have happened without you here. Uh, well, that went very smoothly. <laughs> Todd lightly grabs my waist and pulls me forward into a tight embrace. Beth? Oh no, he loves us. Todd became the only god with, a, with two Ds. Technically, he rules the universe, but he stayed here with me. That's us. True end. Okay, we do have to see what sacrificing ourselves does. I... I have to do something. I run out in front of Todd. Escape attacks with his god energy. A flash of red rushes over me, and I die. I hear Todd screaming. Beth! <laughs> oh, I see. I get it now. Todd. God. Beth. I. This. This isn't what I wanted. The world ends. We... we did it. But at what cost? What has science done? A lonely god. <laughs> Alright. Success. <laughs> Beautiful. We have finished the game and, and we uh, romanced Todd, I guess. <laughs> god Howard. Alrighty. Closing out of that. And now... This one's gonna be a bit more... Normal. Serious. <laughs> Wah. Sound. Oh, no. It's normal now. There. There we go. There we go. Beautiful. Um, and then we'll also change this. The witch and her assistant. Done. Alrighty. This one's like more serious and cute looking. <laughs> So who knows how we'll do at this one. But yeah. Clock ringing. Can't I rest five more minutes, please? I spent all night trying to make a potion work. Clock still ringing. Right, right, I've got it. No sleeping in. Jeez. Wookie. How you doing? <laughs> no rest for the witch, I guess. The witch slumped into her couch before Sally, her salamander familiar, wriggled onto her lap. Like the new hobby. Thank you. I made this last year and then I'm just recycling it because I'm lazy. <laughs> but yes, it is a Valentine's special, basically. The tiny amphibian's tongue snapped over her fingers as though they were food. No. Nope. Ah, Sally, every morning you act as though I haven't fed you in weeks. The familiar continued, its sticky tongue tugged at the witch's fingertips for attention, for food. At least let me put my feet on the floor. Maybe it's time for a pet. I'm okay with giving you all my attention, but sometimes you're too much. Would your loneliness lessen if I brought a little friend home? Or would it worsen and make you jealous and needy? I love, I'd love you the same even if I own a pet someday, I promise. Setting Sally down with a yawn, the witch prepared breakfast for each of them. Sally became my familiar when I was young, and she helped me through countless misadventures. As such, Sally's family to me. It said that once a familiar's master dies, the familiar passes soon after, remaining by their side until their last breath and accompanying them for eternity afterwards. I don't know about being together forever in the afterlife, but one thing's for sure, contemplating Sally's death makes me miserable. The witch laughed nervously before turning in the salamander's direction, breaking away from her thoughts. But girl, the mess here is bound to attract unwanted spirits. We ought to clean soon. 
Sally snorted it as if to say, you never clean anyway, so who cares? Oh no, this game is calling me out. <laughs> then she gobbled up her meal, paying her own owner no further attention. Hey, I'm not lazy, okay? There's simply too much work to do since mom left. I really have enough time to rest, let alone clean. Maybe I should hire an assistant to help me with the chores? Wonder what kind of person I'd employ if I advertised at the tavern. Do you think they'd be... I'd hope reliable from the get-go. <laughs> I'd prefer a quick learner, talented enough to be my apprentice, someone capable of assisting me with potions and remedies. I like being depended on, but I'd appreciate partnering with someone I trust to share my workload. Imagine that, Sally. Your owner becoming a teacher sounds rather cool, no? Though, rarely are mundane beings unafraid of witches and wizards. We are one of the most powerful species, along with demons and angels, after all. And being feared makes me feel so lonely. Which finished her breakfast lost in her thoughts and prepared to go outside. Chill ran along her spine as she opened the door, and a cold wind slipped through her nightdress. Ooh! She frowned at the gray overcast sky. The weather gets colder by the day. I should stock up on food, plants, and wood before winter. The cold seasons never come this early. Hopefully this isn't a bad omen. <clears throat> Shivering in the night where she collected the letters from her mailbox and hurried back inside. Let's see what news they brought me today. News from the capital, potion orders. Oh, this request is rather urgent, but... She glanced at her shelves, noticing more empty space than jars inside. I should restock more often. Returning her attention to the letters, the witch's eyebrows narrowed. This one's for mom again. How many times must I write until these people understand she moved last year with grandma? Beryl left. I'm Beryl's daughter. My name is... Unia. Eunice. <laughs> Unia. <laughs> Unia! I'd appreciate if they remembered. I guess I'll visit Mother's house soon anyway, when we're having our annual family gathering. That'll be the perfect time to hand her these letters. Maybe I should take a break. I'm so exhausted these days and being unfocused is terrible for my work. Say, Sally, where would you like to vacation? I think I'd love... Mm-hmm. Cozy Cottage does sound fun. But I think I like the beach better. Uh, what about, consider, a cozy cottage next to the beach? <laughs> I think I'd love somewhere near the water. I can hear now the relaxing ambiance of the riverside, or even soothing sound of sea waves. I always love the sound of rain against windows or of water flowing into a bath, but I doubt I'll ever see the rumored vast oceans. Too busy to climb mountains or relax near waterfalls in the countryside. But hey, at least we have that picturesque river past the glade. Anyway, vacation or not, the inventory won't refill itself. Hop into my bag, Sally. We'll collect some ingredients in the woods. The witch was about to step outside when she recalled the chill she'd felt earlier. I'll take a coat in case it gets cold. Then she departed into the forest. As expected, it's getting colder. It'll rain soon, and while that doesn't bother me... The rain never bothered me anyway. I know you dislike the rain, Sally. Want to wait for me inside? Salamander, ans Salamander <laughs> answered with a tearful little cry before nestling into the bag. Guess you want to tag along then. All right, let's go. Let's go. The woods surrounding the cottage are safer than those at the border, or those that border the demon lands. The demons themselves aren't bad per se, but the immoral ones roam those territories. Poor things. The demons and their ancestors resulted from the first angel's failed experiments, warriors meant to serve in the War of the Angels 2,000 years ago. It was a colossal disaster from what I've heard. Hopefully we won't witness another one, but rumors suggest there are small groups of demons rebelling here and there. And heaven knows how much angels loathe defiance against their kingdom. Their top-ranked people are too controlling in my opinion, and their leaders actively discourage change that would improve things. It sounds stressful to be an angel nowadays, though. Wonder how things were in the beginning when they were only once or when they were the only species. I should learn more about them when I have time. History must be fascinating. Fascinating. Time passes as the witch gathers herbs lost in her thoughts. She didn't immediately notice the rain falling on her. Ever so often Sally shuffled in the bag, a gesture she only did when nervous. When the back of the witch's neck prickled, she realized she was being followed. Alert and observant, the witch crept towards the tree on her right. Show yourself! Eek! She was unprepared for the harmless wild creature she discovered. They stared at each other in silence. 
her intrigued and him on the verge of tears like a baby werewolf who'd lost his pack or a deer in headlights. <laughs> Werewolves don't have blonde hair and blue eyes. What's your name? What are you doing here? You're a witch, right? I'm the one asking the questions. Please spare me. What? No, I won't hurt you. I just wanted to know your name and why you're near my home. You won't hurt me, really? I won't. I promise. <gasps> my name is Zalil and I've come to... Uh, uh, that's you! The loudest sneeze Yunia had ever he heard interrupted his sentence. Zalil looked frail. He's likely to catch a cold. The witch stepped forward, offering her coat to him, but... Stay back, you witch! Brood, is that how you treat people trying to help you? Help me? Yes? I'm not so heartless that I'd ignore someone at risk of catching a cold. So, do you want my coat? Take it. I don't want you getting ill, alright? I, uh, I swear I don't bite. And I'll feel bad if you caught a cold since I can help. The hesitation sparkling in his eyes remained, so Yuna strode forward. Ignoring his reluctance, she secured the coat on his shoulders. <gasps> Sorry, I didn't mean to startle you. It, it's okay. Uh, Want to take shelter in my house until the rain stops? It's nearby. All right. Yunia turned around with a soft smile as she didn't want to scare him further. This way, follow me. <laughs> the witch led the way and they soon arrived at the cabin. Don't worry, I'll only fatten you up a little bit. <laughs> it's a little cottage. You seem surprised. I am. Zalil scampered towards the garden and clapped his hands together. However, only the witch noticed the spring of the... Of the plants when he neared them. Oh, so lovely. Look how his behavior changed upon seeing my garden. Admire herbs later. For now, let's go inside. Once inside, the witch offered her hand to Zalil. I'll take my coat now. Oh, yes, of course. She placed the jacket near the fireplace to dry. It's messy, but sit wherever you want. Is the chair okay? Wherever's fine. I'll be back with some drinks. While Yunia boiled water, she snuck a glance at her guest. Zai figured fidgeted in his seat and his gleaming eyes surveyed her home. He's strange, but not unpleasant. His clothes look high quality and those physical features. Few beings have blonde hair and glittering blue eyes around here. Curious how he ended up in these woods. Sally jumped onto the witch's shoulder as she portioned hot water into mugs. I'm almost done with the tea, sweetie. Would you keep our guest company while I finish this? Sally responded with a cute cry and leapt to the floor. A little ee! <laughs> Good girl! The witch soon joined them and sat before Zylil. Here, drink this. It'll warm you up. Thank you. He seems comfortable around me now. That's good. I hope Sally was a fine host during my absence. Of course, she's adorable. I think he could compete with her for who's cutest, and it'd be difficult to choose. Sally's gonna be sad upon hearing that. <laughs> Thanks for this. I'm sorry for avoiding your assistance earlier. Don't worry about that. But I'm curious why you were so afraid. Well, because witches are evil, right? Where did you hear that ridiculous rumor? It's no rumor. I've read it in several books. Books? Yes, the ones my mother read to me when I was a baby. Weird, that's the first I've heard of witches being villains in children's books. Where were the books from? Humans wrote them! You know, humans only exist in fairy tales, right? Oh ho! And in history books! There's mentions of them in our world's creation. That remains to be proven. I believe they exist. I've enjoyed their tales since I was a child, so why wouldn't they? I see. But witches and wizards aren't evil, I promise. They're eccentric, sure, but otherwise similar to everyone else. Like any other species, they aren't divided into good or bad, just flawed with lives of endless possibilities. I, I know. I was afraid because you startled me. Anyway, it's more common that angels are the villains, right? Mm-hmm. But they aren't all evil, either. There are nice angels, too, I swear. Hmm. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I know, don't worry, I don't consider you an enemy. Uh, you knew? But how? Well, it's obvious from your blue glittering eyes and blonde hair. Aren't you afraid of me, then? Angels, we have a bad reputation. Just because you're rumored to be a bad guy doesn't mean you are. Besides, you're my guest, and we're already becoming friends. Interesting angels with antlers. Cute, cute. Does that mean you want to know more about me? You'll tell me more than yes, I'm listening. I'll tell you. You will? He surely is friendly for someone so defensive just a few minutes ago. 
I'm an angel, but you've noticed my horns, right? I have. Actually, I'm a hybrid, so half angel, half forest spirit. My mother is a forest spirit. My father lives elsewhere, as angels can't stay down here long. Then he returned to heaven? Yes, I still remember how sad my parents were having to part. Aw, I don't understand. Oh, didn't mean to right-click, but good to know that's safe. Aren't fallen angels banned from returning to heaven? Oh, he's no fallen angel. My father's an ambassador. He fell in love with my mother during his mission. Angels can only stay down here for a few years before their health deteriorates past the point of no return. Dad considered becoming a fallen angel to remain with us, but he'd have suffered and my mother didn't want that. She convinced him it was better for him to return. I see. That's sad. It was at first, but he's visiting us more often thanks to the rise of demonic rebellions. I don't understand politics, so I hope everything will be okay for everyone. Hopefully. Will you be okay? Hybrids have poor health compared to pureblood species, especially hybrid angels. Unfortunate, isn't it? Considering we're the strongest species alongside witches and demons. It's ironic that we're powerful until we're on land too long, or if we become fallen angels. But I'm okay. With nature's blessing, I'm as healthy as other hybrids. It's not to say I don't get sick. I may catch a cold from walking in the rain. I'd have brought an umbrella if I'd known. Sai's spirits are somber during the lull in the conversation. Despite his cheerful tone, maybe his colds are severe when he gets one. The witch wondered if there was a way to lighten the atmosphere. Smile. Yunia smiled at him, and he smiled back. It'll be okay, since it's warm here. I'm glad to hear it. However, you haven't told me what you were doing in the woods. Were you lost? Ah, oh, right! I meant to abduct you! Sorry? Well, not in a bad way. Is it possible to kidnap someone nicely? I had a good reason. Oh, I'm all ears. You see, I wanted to attend the mighty magical academy, but my house's grand intendant is opposed to it. What does that have to do with me? Well, he declared, you cannot intend unless you prove you're strong enough to win against a witch or a wizard. He was exaggerating, but I really want to study magic, and I heard a witch lived in the neighboring forest, so... Can you maybe come help me and pretend I defeated you, please? That's a bad idea. Won't you regret lying about defeating me later? Well, probably. But what else can I do? I'm not good at anything, so of course I couldn't win against a witch alone. That's when the witch remembered what she'd seen earlier. Are you talentless, though? What do you mean? Who decided you're weak? Does everyone say that to you? Some people harass me for being frail, but most people pity me. There are some who are overprotective and think I'm too weak to survive in this world. Honestly, I am clumsy and don't have any special talent. Compared to others, I'm useless. Are you sure about that? You aren't useless. I'm not? What makes you say that? I don't understand. I see great potential in you. My witch sense is never wrong. Really? Yes, I'll prove it to you right now. How? You'll find out if you follow me. Curious, Celil did as instructed and followed her outside. The rain had stopped, but they could hear the occasional drop falling off a leaf. I love the smell after the rain, it's so refreshing. Same. Fresh, like, watered dirt. <laughs> smells good. Yeah. What is it? It's called Petrichor, I think. I adore the atmosphere after a powerful rain shower. I wonder if being a forest spirit plays a role in my enjoyment. Maybe. Come this way. The witch smiled before taking Zalil's hand, but released him when he flinched. Sorry, that was rude of me. You're so agreeable that I forgot we met only a little while ago. It's okay, it just surprised me. Alright. Yunia hesitated, but then decided it'd be awkward to take his hand again. She crossed to her garden and waved her guest over. Zalil had yet to move. Aren't you coming? All right! I grow a variety of plants for different purposes in the garden. Those plants there are for cooking, these are for general remedies, these are... Yunia paused, hesitating to explain what the current section of plants was for. However, she continued after a thought, and these are for... Intimate purposes. Zilil didn't react. <laughs> Intimate purposes, like Aphrodite... Aphrodite... Aphrodisiacs and medicines that help with libido? Yes. They're among the easiest plants to grow, that's why there's so many love potions on the market. You know that much about it? Yes, I like plants, so I know a ton about them. Maybe I should ask you for advice. Sure, I'd be happy to help. Well, why grow all these plants? I run a small business selling potions and remedies. Unfortunately, I struggle in some areas. She pointed to the last section full of discolored, shriveled plants. I tried growing herbs for severe injuries and health problems, but as you can see... Poor things. I tried my best, but they won't cultivate. Maybe it's my magic flow? I'm unsure how to fix it. Plants for serious health problems are difficult to grow. 
Could be because you're conducting your magic the wrong way, or perhaps you're lacking the magical resources for the task. The rarer the plant, the more energy it requires. I figured. Sadly, nobody's ever taught me. What? Us witches and wizards have to figure things out ourselves. Unless you're from a rich family, there aren't opportunities to hire tutors. Most of us learn from books. If one's lucky, recipes are passed down from their parents, like me. However, if they didn't receive a proper magical education themselves, their knowledge is still lacking. That's why I wish to attend the Mighty Magical Academy. I'll learn so much more there. Me too. My mom taught me what she knew, but I want to study more. But for now, let's tend to these poor babies, shall we? Zaleel rested his hands near the plants and took a deep breath. All traces of the dear boy's cheerfulness vanished as determination took over. Slowly, hundreds of sparkly particles emanated from his body and the plant. How pretty. My magic doesn't do that. Is that specific to Earth Elementals? A few seconds later, not only had Zaleel healed the plant, he'd revived the shriveled herbs around it. Yay! All done! Wow. You dare say you're useless? Sorry? You've revived this garden! But isn't it common to be able to revive small beings? No! Uh, oh! And see, you've proved my point, so repeat after me. I am not useless! Everyone do the same! You're still unconvinced? I... Sorry. Well, it's not like you change your opinion about yourself because someone told you to. Sorry. What kind of deal? You never know. Aren't deals a demon custom? Though I've heard that of the odd angel making one or two. What kind of deal is this? I won't pay with my body, just so you know, at least not until I know you better. Just where did your mind go? Excuse me! But you're right. In a way, I do require your body. Ah, I knew it! Relax, it's nothing like that. Become my assistant! Your assistant? Yes, it'll benefit both of us. Having an official witch's assistant certificate will be a tremendous advantage for you if you want to be- or if you want to enter the academy. And for me, well, I must split my tasks in two, so I'd greatly uh, appreciate your help. We'd even assist each other in the areas where our knowledge is lacking. What do you say? I, I actually like that idea. My mom will be okay, but I'm unsure about the intendant. I never know how to face him, and I can't win arguments against him. Then I'll go with you. Besides, you'll be my assistant, and we'll be together every day. L like roommates? Basically. You mentioned earlier that you're from a neighboring forest, right? Right. It'd have taken an entire day to reach by horse, but I came on foot. Do you want to make that journey every day? Not really, no. Then stay here. Wait, but do you have horses? I have a flying horse. Well, really? A pegasus? What about... A unicorn. <laughs> but I thought they only allowed angels to have them. I was joking, actually. I have one of these. The witch collected her broom and focused her energy into it. It levitated around her knees. Oh, you can fly on your broom? Yunia grinned proudly. <laughs> yup. But it's rare for even witches and wizards to fly. My element is the air, so it's natural for me. As natural as it is for me to grow plants? Probably. Impressive. Thanks. Well, my broom is as fast as a horse. We could still go. Uh, though I just like traveling at night. Wait, have you traveled with passengers before? Yes, no worries. I'm so nervous. This will be my first time flying. It's a little paced before the thin broom doubting its comfort and stability. The witch giggled at his concern and patted his shoulder. It's okay, it's okay. I'll add seats and belts to it if you're worried about safety. That's reassuring. I promise you're safe with me. Safe with you. Alright then, I'll trust you. This dear boy is so naive and innocent. How long until we destroy that? I'm kidding. <laughs> the fact that he's still alive after all these years despite his naive naivete <laughs> proves he's way more capable than he looks. Assistant, I'm looking forward to what will happen next. Oh? That was it, I guess. I wonder, can I... Guess this is me, maybe? I wonder... Um... Sure. I want 
Oh, gives me a migraine if I ignore it for too long. Now that I'm lazing around beneath my blankets before starting the day in the late afternoon. Not that you can do that for me, huh, Sally? And even if you could, I doubt you would. You're a diva here, after all. Heard breakfast. <clears throat> Sally's family. It's, uh, the once, uh, familiar dies, the, uh, the master, the bit of remaining by their side until the last breath. Uh, let's say... Clumsy at first. Maybe they'll be a slow learner who'd increase my workload. While I'm hiring an assistant, not training an apprentice, they need not be studious from the get-go. I'd appreciate another pair of hands, clumsy or not. I'm happy when others rely on me, so it's no bother. I just, I wonder if we can find another person or if it's just that story. A mentorship would be a fantastic experience. Teaching a pupil sounds so fulfilling. Really, a mundane being uh, is unafraid of witches and wizards. Mm, yeah. Cozy cottage. I love a trip to a cottage and fresh, fresh forest air is so soothing. I love hiking there since the town is close enough to see mom and grandma whenever I want. While traveling sounds fun, what if I discover I prefer staying in my comfort zone? Let's finish my mountain of work before thinking of vacations. Can't pro work properly with my storage so empty. Come on, Sally, there's no time for daydreaming. The witch donned her coat, tiny familiar left into her bag, and they strolled outside. It's raining! It's frickin' rainy! The woods surrounding the cottage are safer than those that border the demon lands. Demons. Alas, the grass was slippery. The witch had no purchase to prevent herself from tumbling into the river. Ooh! After hitting her head against a tree trunk on the way down. Took a while before the witch opened her eyes. Longer still until she was coherent. When she was aware of her surroundings again, she noticed two things. First was that it rained everywhere except on her. Her clothes and skin were dry as the downpour battered everything else. She squinted, perplexed, before she realized that a thin, almost tra transparent veil protected her from the storm. Her second observation was a humanoid creature observing her with his four eyes. His skin and tail were covered with blue scales. Okay, this is the other one. And his hair, which danced elegantly like waves foaming on the shoreline, had a life of its own. At last you're awake. How are you feeling? Inya flinched with a gasp. <gasps> ah! Oh no, don't worry, I'm harmless. Sorry if I scared you. That wasn't my intention. The witch blinked, then smiled apologetically. Oh, sorry, I was a bit surprised. Just have a little bump, I think. Thanks for asking. Um, how am I dry when the last thing I remember was falling in the river? Are you the one who helped me? I did, yes. But I'd have missed you falling in the river if this little one didn't yell like a dying werewolf. Yunia lowered her head to see Sally resting on her lap. Thank the god she's safe. Seems she can't swim, so yelling was her only option. It must have been exhausting. Poor Sally. No wonder she's so tired now. There's that, but she was adamant I was some villain and scratched out my body while I was rescuing you. Ah, I'm sorry about that. Sally's small, but she's protective whenever she thinks I'm in danger. That's cute. So her name's Sally. May I ask for yours? Oh, my name? It's Yunia. That's a... Uh, uh, whatever. <laughs> Yunia? That's a peculiar name. I've never heard it before. Yeah, it's, uh, uh, researched. I'm kidding. <laughs> Doesn't it sound otherworldly? I like the ring of it. It sounds like the human names you hear in fa fairy tales. Same goes for your friend there. My father was a huge fan of the theory that humans exist, and that perhaps angels have something to do with humans. If they never existed, then we wouldn't have words like humanoids or human-like in our vocabulary, right? But nobody ever seen a real living human. They're only mentioned in fairy tales. Despite that, my father's love for those folklore being inspired by my name. He adored and believed in them, but I don't. Not anymore. The witch's savior leaned closer, his gaze intent, his brows raised. <laughs> Are you wondering why I'm speaking in past tense? I admit I'm curious, but I didn't want to pry. It's okay, it's just... Well, my father disappeared during an expedition for humans. I don't believe in their world, but... Thinking he hopped through a dimensional gate to meet them is... The only solace for me, for we never found his body. I'm sure he made it. I believe in the human world as well, so maybe he discovered a gate. He's probably living his dream right now. Maybe. By the way, I've overshared about my life to a total stranger whose name I don't know. Right? I know yours. It's only fair you know mine. 
My name's Mirin, but you can call me Mir. It's nice to meet you. Thanks for saving me, Mir, and... The witch glanced at the transparent veil. For protecting me from the rain? Are you doing that? Yes, and I dried you off when you fell into the river. It's odd, but drying things is easy for my kind. I also placed the berries and herbs back in your bag. That's so nice of you. Thanks a bunch. In any case, I should return home now. I have a lot to do, and I'm afraid uh, my accident has delayed things. You tucked Sally into her pocket, collected her bag, and stood. Or so she thought. Ow, my head. It hurts. You shouldn't stand up so hastily. Are you dizzy? Here, let me escort you home. Ooh, gentlemen. <laughs> no, I couldn't. I insist. You're too unsteady to return on your own. It's dangerous. Hop on my back. I'll carry you. With what legs? With what legs? <laughs> um... Oh, quick save. Yes. Uh, sure. I hate to admit it, but I think you're right. And please wait a minute, I'll change my skin texture to make the ride comfortable for you. You can do that! Here and smirked. Oh, I can do a lot of things with my body. Ooh, scandalous. Sentence out of context might be misunderstood. Did he do that on purpose? Let's not have weird thoughts about his words when I'm about to write him. <laughs> Which did what she was told and settled on Mir's back. Alright, I'm ready. Sorry again for this. It's no trouble. Are you comfortable enough? I hope my skin doesn't feel gross. Oh, don't worry about that. It's smoother than I thought. I love your honesty. Shall I speak politely as well? Compared to you, I'm... No, I find your casualness refreshing. Then, can I be even more casual? I'm not good at being ladylike. Please do. Then you may be casual with me, too. I'll try. The witch relaxed against Mirren's shoulders. Her new friend was nimble and muscular. His movement soothed her like the sway of a rocking cradle. Soon enough, her eyelids were heavy. Are you perhaps falling asleep? Yeah. Hitting my head really knocked me out, no pun intended. Then rest. Can I? Of course. I'll do that then, thanks. She yawned and tapped the familiar in her pocket. Sally, sweetheart, can you show me the way home, please? The little salamander nibbled on the witch's fingers before hopping onto the road, determined to fulfill her new duty. Thank you. Soon they arrived in the garden outside the witch's cottage. No, I'm, I'm up! <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> we arrived, are you feeling better? Yes, thanks to you I could rest properly. That's good. I mean, you gotta be careful about going to sleep after getting, like, a bonk on the head. Could be, could be, uh, concussion territory, so be careful with that. <laughs> good thing it was just a, a tired instead of a, a head swollen. <laughs> the witch dismounted with Mir's gentle assistance. Do you need anything else? Just say the word and I'll do my best. That's nice of you, but I'm good now. Do you have time to come inside for a beverage? I want to thank you. Sure, I'd like that. And inside the pair went, through, though the witch smiled sheepishly at her guest. Sorry, it's so cramped and messy. It's alright, it has character. Oh, my mother would disagree with you, she likes things organized. She'd freak out if she saw this place now. It was tidy when she still lived with me. The witch strode into the kitchen while her guest waited with a newfound silence on her couch. What else is there to do? Thank you again for your help. I already said it, but thank you again for earlier. My pleasure. I hope I wasn't too heavy. You weren't. Please don't worry. And your veil, I appreciate it throughout the journey. But of course, it'd have been rude of me to let you get drenched. I suppose, <laughs> but I understand. Veil requires a lot of energy, right? Not really. I have incredible stamina to begin with. <coughs> oh, because you're a merman? Yes, but even among the merfolk, not everyone can cast it casually. See, you must be exceptional, then. You could say that, yes. He smiles, but he seems concerned. Maybe it's a sensitive topic. You look worried. Do I? Yes, but I won't pry. And I know exactly what would cheer you up. A delicious hot soup made with homegrown veggies. Neko Heiko, hello! How are you doing? Thanks for stopping in. Hope you're having a good day. We're playing some... The, the visual novels. <laughs> but yeah. Come, come in, come have some chill, cozy time. <laughs> Homegrown veggies, perhaps, but your smile is already a great source of comfort. What a, what a, 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 a smooth talker. <laughs> You're flattering me, but I'll take it. 
Yinya happily finished preparing the food with a satisfied smile on her face. After a few minutes, she returned and sat in front of Mir. Here you are! It smells delicious, I can't wait to taste it. Fingers crossed you'll like it. <laughs> it's disgusting! You miss playing VNs? Yeah, I, I don't play a ton of them, but they are fun when I do get around to them. There's a lot of really interesting ones, especially like the, uh, just the smaller stuff. The last one was like way back in 2014. I will say, it was kind of hard trying to find, like, kind of cutesy, wacky stuff for today that wasn't Hato Full Boyfriend. I googled, like, a billion different lists and, like, all of them were just Hato Full Boyfriend. And then, like, a couple others that just always <laughs> came up. Which, like, yes, Hato Full Boyfriend is great. I have it. I love it. But, like, <laughs> I wanted something else. <laughs> I'm sorry I took so long. Am I eating up too much of your time? Are you worried about my migration schedule? Yes, aren't other merfolk waiting for you? No, I'm traveling alone, so I have all the time in the world. Hot full boyfriend is the best. It really is. It's it's the top tier. <laughs> Maybe some other time I'll play it, but I wanted to do other stuff today. I have all the time in the world alone! I'd rather not be involved with my tribe members. Oh my. You don't sound fond of them. You heard right. Our beliefs are too different for us to coexist. You see... Always been cold-hearted conquerors who murder those standing in their way. And they don't feel an ounce of guilt about it. They're the worst! That's their tradition and they won't change it. I've understood that since I was a child. Peace and negotiation are against their way of life. I tried to convince them there are better methods than violence to solve problems. I did. But it was in vain. I was an outcast, even among the folks who claimed they understood me. They sentenced me to death for my idealism. What?! Extreme, isn't it? But that's how they are. I was powerless against it. Wait, I'm not the one speaking. <laughs> Oops. Fortunately, I escaped. They were naive and assumed pacifists were also pushovers. They figured I'd accept the sentence without issue. Did you encounter any problems escaping? No, I ran as far as I could. And I ran! I ran so far away! Well, violence isn't always the answer? I know, right? It's almost like, uh, uh, <laughs> almost like that's a good thing to, uh, believe. <laughs> uh, it must have been tough. Honestly, being th with them was more difficult than fleeing. Every day I dreamed of leaving and finding the place I truly belonged. Near side with both relief and sadness. I'm better off without them. Sounds like you didn't have any other choice. Running was the best you could do. Indeed. As long as we don't encounter each other again, I'm safe. They wouldn't chase me this far outside of their waters anyway. Not much of a threat. Honestly, I'm more worried about migrating. I'll stumble into them eventually while traveling, and I won't have a second chance to escape. Yet, I won't survive winter if I don't migrate. He's a mermaid. I thought he was a genie. No, nope. nope. His, his hair is like an ocean. And then he's got the, the cool tail. <laughs> But yeah, this definitely kind of throws you off a pinch. But yeah, then you got like the cool, like fishy ears and stuff. <laughs> oh, then why not stay with me? <gasps> <gasps> Scandalous. <laughs> I mean, since you don't have anywhere else to go, why not spend a cold season here in my cottage? That's kind of you, but you might reconsider your offer. Why? Pretty eyes. I think I owe you a more detailed explanation about myself. Will it influence my decision? We're a bit confused on who's talking, it seems. <laughs> I'm certain of it. I'm listening. Very well. I'm the prince of a royal merfolk lineage, one of the largest in this world. I see. I'm surprised your expression hasn't changed. I mean, you've got that, that nice top on, so who knows. Well, to be fair, guess you're important thanks to your demeanor and high-quality clothes. I hadn't assumed you were royalty, though. Uh, you, and you didn't point it out earlier? You hadn't mentioned it, so I figured it wasn't my place to talk about? Aren't you too calm considering what you've learned? I mean, you said it was okay for me to be casual with you, right? Yes. You aren't really a prince anymore since you'd be dead or disinherited if you returned, so... Insist! My offer stands, even after hearing about your background. Besides, I couldn't let you freeze after escaping in an undeserved death sentence. That's true. Then is there any reason for you to decline? No, if I may, I'll accept your offer then. Great! 
Plants her bag on the table and sighed. I should work now that I feel better. Shouldn't you rest more? No, my tasks are too urgent. They can't wait. Thanks again, by the way. The berries I collected were rare. I'd be in trouble if I lost them in the river. Yes, I noticed they're the type for severe injuries and other health issues. I hope you're okay. Oh, no, no, it's not for me. It's for one of my clients. Client? Yes, I run a potion and remedy business here to save money and pay my tuition. I offer to help with that matter. Alas, I'm afraid my name is no longer worth anything. I tried searching visual novels on Steam in the first. I saw this visual novel maker and I was like, ooh. Yeah, there's some there's some decent decent I say as if I know. But yeah, there's a few uh, visual novel makers and stuff. Um I also came across there's a website called the Visual Novel Database, and that's where I found these ones that I'm playing today. And I, I think people just like log all of their uh, visual novels on it. It's really cool. Really useful resource for finding like a billion visual novels. <laughs> you seem independent. I hope so, but honestly, I still have much to learn, and attending the mighty Magical Academy is one of my life's goals. You're ambitious. I love your determination. Thanks! Don't forget to rely on others when you need it. I don't know about that. I welcome your help while I was dizzy. You can rely on me for anything else you need. Ooh, swoon! <laughs> the remedy you'll make with those berries, for example. Would you like my assistance with it? You know how to make it? I do! Wow, I've tried several times in vain. I even attempted growing the berries in my garden. <laughs> you can make a official novel where you put VTubers, but you can never succeed. They always reject your love and the best route is the friendship route. Aww. <laughs> That's funny, that's good. <laughs> Not to worry then. I'll show you how to make the potion and help you grow the plants in your garden. Really? Whoa! Mir glanced around the room. Could do the chores as well if you're too busy with your work. Wow, dude, this dude's just everything. I mean, a second pair of hands never hurts, right? True! Should I take that as approval to help you? Yes! How curious. Earlier, I thought I'd be thrilled to have help around here, and boom, here you are! At your service. Learn a lot from each other. Oh, I can't wait. Plus, with all this new knowledge, maybe I'll become a top-ranking student at the Academy. If it makes you happy, I'd be my pleasure. Well, then I'm in your care. Likewise, things will be interesting for the both of us starting now. Now let's start our first study session, shall we? Cute, cute, cute. I wonder if there's a version with both of them. That would be adorable. But that might be the end of that one. Options. Hmm. Credits. Nope. Oh, that just opens a page. Okay, that's a it's a Ren P thing apparently. That's cool. It just has like a, a self-voicing mode so it can read stuff. Neat. Alrighty. Well, we completed that game. Credits already. I know, yeah. These are short games. I picked stuff short because I didn't want to go like too long today since I don't usually stream on Mondays. But that was a little too short. I think we will play the other one that I also have. Um... Let's get it set up. It's gonna take a second. Doop a doop a doop. Um, and then we just do that. Oh no, you can see my browser. I'm kidding. I know all the things. <laughs> this one's Overwatch. I played like a, a fan made Overwatch dating sim forever ago. Um, not on stream or anything, but it was pretty funny. It, it was very long though, and I also did not know how to stream very well, so it kind of got like really borked. <laughs> you know the visual novel where you can date YouTubers and there's like 57 different endings with the fastest playtime of 47 hours? Oh my gosh. Um, I think the only one I really know is there was that like, uh, uh, normal boots one forever ago about like the uh, whatchamacallit's 
you know, those those YouTube peeps. <laughs> but if there's a different one, then yeah. OK, that is the one. Yeah, yeah. I, I have heard about it and seen a little bit of it previously from people. Um, yeah. <laughs> there, there were some very interesting routes. But yeah. Today we're going to date a couple of Overwatch people, maybe. Um, scandalous. Let's see here. Let's get the sound. Get that out of here. Boop, boop, boop. Huh. Oh my gosh, it froze. Cool. A wheel. Yeah, this one's official, so <laughs> it's going to have high quality. Apparently, if you do play Overwatch, um, it's their Valentine's thing that they just released like today, I think. <laughs> Let's see here. I'll put device. There we go. Got sound and everything. <laughs> Next, you're going to tell me KFC has a visual novel. <laughs> what they do? No, they do. It's another one I could have considered, but I think that one's a bit long. But yeah, let's let's play some Overwatch. <laughs> and yeah, if you uh, listen, the real romance is the corgi in that game. But uh, apparently you can get stuff in game from this one, but we're not going to worry about that because I haven't played Overwatch 2, so shh. <laughs> the official but not canon Overwatch 2 dating sim. Except no substitutes unless they're like really good. You ready to play this? Yes. What is your name? Ooh, nya. I keep hitting S instead of A. <laughs> Eunice. I, it's the grandma name. I mean, hey, listen. <laughs> what if my name was Eunice instead? <laughs> like E U N I C E. My name is Eunia. Continue. Set the scene! Alrighty, it's Friday night in the big city. The Laugh Attic. He's a laugh after the week you've had. The Laugh Attic is one of the most tragically unfunny comedy clubs in town, but you love watching people bomb an open mic. Sometimes that people is you. <laughs> it's particularly dark tonight, so dark it'll make for quite the dramatic reveal when your eyes adjust to see who's sitting at the table in the corner. Eunice is considered a cute name. It is a pretty cute name, it's just usually associated with, like, grandmas. Eyes adjusting. 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 Oh my. Oh my. Is that... Is that who you think it is? Um... Goodness. You know what? Hmm, who should we woo first? Any preference? Mercy, Genji, why are there only two? I'm gonna take a bite of a donut in the meantime. I'm probably gonna go through both of them, why not? The one that has abs? Uh, Genji it is then. Uh, Hanzo is the one that was on the main screen. Um, and I think he's supposed to play like a Cupid role in this. But this is Genji. It's Genji! Ninja Cyborg and all around bad boy from Overwatch. No matter how many times you blink, he's still there, and you're completely... You're struck. <laughs> uh, uh, love struck. Immediately, love struck. <laughs> you didn't know you had a thing for cyborg ninjas. Ninjas? Sure. Cyborg, sure. But a cyborg ninja? That's a first for you. Your heart starts racing. You're overwhelmed with happy neurochemicals. Knees weak mom spaghetti. Which earns short supply these days. Oh, brain juice is always in short supply. Oh my! Zap! Hark, do I hear the sound of a heart beating fast and smell the sweat on your palms? What about mom spaghetti? <laughs> I am Cupid, the hero of love in all its varieties. It is my sworn duty to answer the cries of all who desire to love and guide them to fulfillment. You look around, wondering if anyone else can see this, or are you hallucinating? Do not worry, you are the only one who sees me. Oh my. I do not interfere in the mortal realm. Consider me the angel on your shoulder who will point you in the right direction. 
Okay, that's a definite maybe on the hallucination thing, but maybe this hallucination can help you. Now tell me, are you in love? <laughs> no, that's just my baseline anxiety. <laughs> uh, I think so. <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell. The path to love is often confusing, but fear not, I am here to guide you through all of its intricacies. What? Oh wait, I should change... Stream info. I can type. Uh, fine, I guess we're going into the Overwatch category. <laughs> Overwatch 2! Sure. Means I'm gonna give you advice. Oh, okay. Do you wish to win the heart of Genji? Uh, yes. <laughs> I want to win the heart of Genji. Genji, truly. They're brothers. <laughs> I mean, there are only two options, as you made sure I was aware. Of course, it's just that, well, to call Genji difficult would be an understatement. Uh, you're being really judgmental for a vessel of love or whatever. Is this because of the lore or something? The what? The Overwatch lore, you know. Genji was the younger brother. Hanzo killed and felt guilt over ever since. And only Genji wasn't actually dead, he was alive but a cyborg. And Hanzo learned this, but he was still kind of upset about the whole thing, I think. Cupid looks troubled. That... Summary heavily favors Kendrick's view of matters, I feel. But no, I'm merely saying that reaching Kendrick's heart will be a difficult task. Sure, whatever you say, Mr. Grumpy Toga. If you wish to pursue Genji, then I am obligated to help you. It's your love life, no matter how foolish. Well then, how do you think I should approach Cupid? You have to introduce yourself, of course. You cannot start down the path of romance without first speaking to him. So we've been talking to Invisible uh, Hanzo for like... Three minutes now, at least. And Genji's over there being like... Who, who is this person? Given that he strikes me as a selfish, immature person, I would recommend keeping your conversation focused on him. He has always struggled with his sense of self, so do your best to appeal to his interests. You hope he'll get over this hostility for Genji soon, definitely. But that's not important right now. What's important is whether or not Genji will feel any hostility towards you. With Cupid's words in mind, you build up the courage to approach Genji. Um, excuse me. The ninja turns to face you. The purple glow of the club's neon lights illuminate his metal mask. <gasps> so beautiful! Are you talking to me? Yeah, I just saw you, Ed. I wanted to say... Your heart starts pounding in your ears, and your mouth can't find words to speak. Ah, oh, the cute chibi. <laughs> Say something, and remember your choices will affect how he feels about you. <laughs> Do you need healing? <laughs> I really like your outfit! Oh, thanks. Not many people compliment my clothes. Well, to be fair, wearing clothes seems to be a recent thing for you. Game-wise. Cause he looks ridiculous. Uh, no, I really like them. So few people have RGB built into their outfits. It's unique. Yeah, they do look pretty sick, huh? Anyway, I don't think I've seen you around before. I'm Genji, what's your name? I'm Yunia. Nice to meet you, Genji. Yunia, huh? That's a cool name. Reminds me of Yunia from the game Yunia's Odyssey. <gasps> I have a game! I love that game! My parents were actually such big fans, they named me after it. I've been playing since I was born. That's amazing. I was just named after the 11th century work, The Tale of Genji, which is alright, but certainly no Yunia's Odyssey. I mean, Genji was like... the ultimate, like, playboy of... <laughs> uh, of the time. I still think it's pretty cool. Thanks. The Tale of Genji is pretty sick. Oh snap, Wookie! Thank you so much for the gift sub, you punk! <laughs> Do you want to sit down? The next set is starting soon. Maybe we could watch together. <gasps> that was a chair. Wasn't me. <laughs> Genji to have a Playboy Chad. Yup, exactly. Take a seat next to Genji and watch a few sets. 
Can't tell if he ever cracks a smile, but he certainly does laugh at any point. Doesn't laugh at any point. Weird energy to bring to a comedy club. But before you can spend too many minutes basking in the awkward silence, Cupid returns, bringing you more helpful advice. Well, what are you waiting for? Show him you can be exciting. Go perform a set. Oh my gosh. Hi, you're a comedian. Tell a funny joke. Uh, uh, okay, here I go. Love favors the bold. I salute you. That was, that was a paltry laugh. The previous comedian steps down from the stage. Oh my gosh, to some paltry claps. <laughs> when no one stands to take their place to take the initiative to get on stage. Here's what you want to hear. Yes. <laughs> Swallowing your nerves, you address the audience. Hello, everyone. I would be honored to share a joke with you fine people. You look out over the audience and you see Genji looking back at you with what you assume is curiosity. Well, you could make just any joke. You have to wonder, what would make him laugh? Uh, 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 uh. Ninjas. Wow! You tap on the mic and feedback rings in your ears. You lean in close. What kind of shoes does a ninja wear? The crowd holds its breath. Sneakers. Silence. Feels like you've been teleported into a soundproofed void. Not a soul in the crowd has any reaction to spare. You almost wish they'd boo you just so you could know they're still there. <laughs> he loves it! But among them, you see Genji. Curiously, he glances down at his feet, upon which are a pair of high-tech and fashionable sneakers. A quiet chuckle escapes him. Let's go! Oh, that's true! <laughs> Ignoring the appalled stares of the rest of the audience, you make your way back to your seat next to Genji. He seems warmer, leaning towards you. Oh my. I liked your joke. For the record, not all ninjas wear sneakers, but I do, so I still laughed. Making you laugh was the goal, baby. I'm glad to hear you thought it was funny. I was mostly looking to make you laugh. For once, the overconfident cyborg ninja seemed a bit shy. He rubs his arms nervously. Oh my, he's blushing! It's been really nice hanging out with you. Do you think you'd want to go on another date sometime? Absolutely! That sounds wonderful, Genji! <gasps> he sighs. A weight leaves his shoulders. Can't wait. Guess I'll see you again soon. He leaves, and you're left alone in the comedy club. Not for long, though, as Cupid soon reappears. I sense the buds of romance are already beginning to blossom. I'm sure he's probably also a third option. How do you think things went? A glowing review! I don't see how it could have gone better. You made him feel special. And he responded positively to that. But good or bad, your date's in the past, and we still have a long road ahead of us if you truly wish for Genji's heart to be yours. When Genji reaches out to you again, he suggests grabbing dinner for a second date while we traveled the world. He even picks out a, uh, a restaurant Café Azur in Monaco, the exclusive playground of the ultra, ultra rich. Luckily, you live in the hopeful future. You can just hop on a transatlantic train and arrive in Monaco in a few short hours. Neat, huh? Oh, for technology to be that good. You arrive at the restaurant and it looks classy as the name might imply. A robot brings you to a table where Genji awaits you. Please tell me he's not wearing the same hoodie he wore to the comedy club, I was about to say. If I owned a hoodie that cool, I'd wear it every chance I got. And not exactly dressed up either. Listen. I'd wear it every chance I got. I mean, look at it. If I owned a hoodie that cool, I'd wear it everywhere. <laughs> Even to a five-star restaurant. It's got RGB lights on it! Especially to a five-star restaurant. <sighs> no wonder you need my help. <laughs> you take your seat across from Genji and he seems to light up at your presence. Literally. <laughs> oh, Yuni, I didn't expect to see you here. You invited me here for a... Day? Oh, yeah, I guess so. Anyway, how was the ride over? I witnessed the horrors of the deep ocean. <laughs> hmm. 
We're, we're, wait, no. There we go. I kind of want this one. <laughs> Those transatlantic trains take you deep under the ocean, you know? Way deep. There are places that humanity was never meant to venture. The depths of the ocean harbor monsters beyond our most tortured imaginations. And more still remains to be discovered if we are truly foolish enough to search for it. Tell me, what becomes of a mind isolated beneath the crushing depths? Perhaps we too would mirror those tormented figures wandering on the ocean floor where we subjected it to the same conditions. Or maybe we are already monsters and they are the ones who fear us. <laughs> yes. Ha! Huh. Glad to hear it went okay then. I'm happy you could come. Really been looking forward to spending more time with you. You don't have much time to feel bashful before the waitron, waitron returns to your table to take your order. You look over your holo menu, which is like a regular menu, but a hologram, since it's the future. You should think carefully about what you order, and maybe choose something he'd like as well. Even your dinner is gonna be gonna affect this guy's opinion of you. These dating sims are hard work. In that case, what will you order? Uh, uh, whatever his favorite food is. I'll have the Rikimaru ramen. Yum, I do like ramen. That's my favorite food. How did you know? I stalked you and read a whole bunch of it's in the official Overwatch cookbook. Now on sale. In that case, I'll take it too. Yay. I do like ramen, so. The waitress, we don't have that on the menu program, seems to be overridden by it's the customer's always right subroutine. So takes your order back to the kitchen without complaint. Yeah, that's really cool you'd order my favorite food for dinner. There were an over official Unio cookbook out of order years, too. I mean, ramen's pretty high up there, not gonna lie. Made note of his idea, you're always looking for more merchandising opportunities. Oh, you know me! <laughs> Zero merch. <laughs> the two of you spend time chatting, and after a few short minutes, the waitron brings out your meal. Two bowls of ramen. It's honestly impressive that such a nice restaurant can make a dish look like it comes from a cheap ramen shop. Hey, rude! Ramen takes skill, too. This looks just as good as the real thing from Hanamura. All it's missing is the murloc bowl. Then it'd be perfect. Oh no, how could they forget the murloc bowl? That's half the fun! Let me go check with the waiter. Maybe they have murloc bowls in the back. You fetch the waitron, explaining that Rikimaru ramen is, just isn't the same when it's not in branded bowls. Unfortunately, the restaurant does not have any Morlock bowls in hand, but they are able to draw a crude recreation on two of the regular bowls. When you return to the table, Genji looks completely deflated. You sit across from him and he barely even acknowledges your presence. Even Cupid seems troubled by his sudden shift in mood. Perhaps you should check on him, Yunia. I mean... Oh, he's crying! He is crying! <laughs> is everything okay, buddy? You seem bummed out. Genji shrugs. Sorry, another diner recognized me when you were gone. They came over to talk to me. Did they ask for your autograph or something? No, they actually recognized you from the Black Watch incident. They had less than kind words to share with me. I'm so sorry, Genji. I can't believe someone would give you trouble about it here. It's alright, I'm not proud of who I was then, but I will admit it is discouraging. <laughs> I like that even the little Pachimari is crying. Tried my best to become a better person, but I fear my past will always haunt me. Some days it feels like there's nothing I can do to move on from who I was. He sighs, propping his head against his hand dejectedly. It's a heart-rending sight. Seems he could use your reassurance. A small gesture might go a long way. Apparently even Cupid has the sense to put aside his bitterness towards Genji when he's in this state. What do you do to cheer him up? And beat whoever it was up. Um. Hold his hand. You don't think you have the words to help in this situation. Instead, you reach across the small table and take his hands into yours. He seems surprised, but when you meet his gaze with a smile, he relaxes. He squeezes your hands, taking a deep breath to steady himself. Yeah! I'm the best at relationships. 100%. <laughs> I'm sure I'd feel much worse if you weren't here. The least I could do. You mean that literally holding his hand was probably the easiest, least expensive thing you've done all night. Let's see, huh? Our food's getting cold. And soggy ramen is gross. Two of you finally enjoy the night as it was supposed to go. You don't know how Genji eats with his mask on, but every time you look away, more food disappears from his plate. 
You assume it's getting into his mouth one way or another. By the time you're done eating, Genji seems happier than ever. You're glad the evening is going in a more positive direction. I wanted to ask you about something. Shoot! No, don't shoot! How would you feel about going somewhere special for a next day? As if a high-end ritzy restaurant isn't somewhere special. Well, I guess... Yeah, <laughs> a five-star isn't special. Anywhere that's special to you is special to me. Ew. Sure, anywhere that's special to you is special to me. That one doesn't earn you any points with Genji, but it makes him blush, and isn't that worth any uh, more than any kind of gameplay progression? I was hoping we could go somewhere that's really special to me. How'd you feel about a trip to Nepal? Oh my gosh. Uh... What's in Nepal? <laughs> what's so special about it? I mean, it's a cool place. It was a very important place in my growth as a person. This may surprise you, but an isolated mountaintop helped me find peace. There's more to it, obviously, but I figured I could explain when we got there. Sure, can't wait to hear all about your backstory. Okay, I'll see you there. I hope it'll be really special. Had a lot of fun tonight, thanks again! He departs from the restaurant and you're left alone. Well, as alone as you can be when you're haunted by the Vessel of Valentines. <laughs> Another day down with a third to come? Most impressive! Thanks! How do you think Genji and I are doing? Seems incredibly happy with you, not to tempt fate, but I suspect it would be difficult for you to lose his affection now. Heck yeah! It's still another day in your future, do what you can to prepare. I sense this one will be the most important of all. The third date awaits! <laughs> Just straight up a screenshot. You send the snowy mountains in Nepal and the cold rudely seeps through every layer of clothing you wore. Hard to believe that just a few days ago you were telling jokes in a comedy club, and now this is what what's expected of you to keep the relationship going. I put in so much work. So much work for this man. You're trudging along, Cupid appears again. Thankfully, you know his deal by now, or you think you were seeing things thanks to hypothermia. Yunya, I need to stress how important this day will be. Clearly, you are important to Genji. He would not have brought you here otherwise, so just be sure you do every uh, your very best this time. Thanks for all the help. It means a lot. Of course, even if you and Genji are difficult at times, it is my privilege to assist you on the path of love. Oh my! But perhaps I should be thanking you. Whether or not Genji's heart will be yours in the end, your devotion to love is inspiring. It has been a pleasure accompanying you. Aw, oh, Cupid, you're sounding all sappy. Don't tell me this is a teaser for the secret Cupid path of the dating sim. Don't be ridiculous. If there were a secret Cupid path, do you truly think I would broadcast it so freely? Besides, a path of that nature would be difficult to unlock. You need to say, successfully win the hearts of both heroes to show your, me your commitment to love. I figured. Hypothetically, of course. Of course. Hypothetically. We're going for it. We're doing it. But enough of this. It's time for your final day to truly begin. With this vote of confidence, you continue your journey up the mountain. Eventually, you arrive in a quaint little village. Genji's there to greet you. Honestly, you don't understand why you can't travel together. Agreed. Yunia, you made it. What would you? What did you think of the hike? It was worth it here to be with you. I wouldn't say it was easy, but it was worth it to be here with you, Genji. I'm happy you think so. <laughs> there are a few people who'd be willing to scale a mountain to spend time with me, if you can believe that. It means a lot that you did. Anyway, I'm glad you're finally here. This place is very special to me, and I hope I can show you why. Come for a walk with me? No. Nah. Gladly, you take Genji's arm. He leads you all around the village, and you can't help but bask in every sight. It's truly beautiful. Certainly not the kind of place you'd want to wait. No, go back. What's more beautiful than the village itself is the way Genji glows while talking, taking you through it, recounting memories of the time you spent here. He's li- He's literally glowing. The RGB light is pumped up to 500. <laughs> Tells you everything from the story of how he first arrived here to the tales of his most trying meditations. After scroll strolling a while, scrolling, <laughs> Genji takes him to the old accommodations that housed him through his time in Nepal. Though he has been absent for some time, the room is still clearly his. There's an old mattress, a haori, and his brother. <laughs> Framed photo of them taken years ago. Genji goes to say something. Ugh. Sorry, gotta clear my throat. 
but someone else speaks first. Genji, you've arrived. Is that Senyata? Yeah! <laughs> I hope you had a safe journey, my student. I feel like I need the robo voice for him, but it's fine. It's Senyata. <laughs> How sad is it that the only place you can get Senyata content these days is the explicitly non-canon dating sim in that one short story? Well, maybe something will happen with that Ramacha guy soon. Who knows? Advertising. Master, it's good to see you again. Indeed, I heard that you were bringing a visitor, and I hoped I could meet them. Of course, Yunya, this is my master, Zenyatta. You're ready for a trek through the snow-covered mountains, but this is basically like meeting Genji's parents. Is that weird for a third date? Doesn't matter, it's happening, and now it's up to you to deal with it. Give him a fist bump. It's wonderful to meet you! I've heard great things. That's a lie, you haven't heard anything, but he seems to react warmly even so. Likewise, I'm glad you survived your journey here. You can ignore the threatening aura of that sentence and let him keep talking. <laughs> Sorry for Genji to have company here. I sense he must be quite fond of you. Oh, I certainly hope so. Master, you're embarrassing me. I'm sure your companionship will mean a great deal to him. He has always struggled to accept himself. Perhaps the acceptance of another will help him along his path. You never realize how much your company might mean to Genji. To think, just a few nights ago, you were planning to enjoy the comedy styling of literally anyone in New York City by yourself. Now it's entirely possible you're changing the life of an Overwatch agent. Non-canonically, of course. I believe... Master? I sense I have surpassed my annual screen time allotment. I'm afraid I will need to depart- No! Zenyatta, why couldn't I woo you? But please. Take my greatest blessing and enjoy the remainder of your time here. Two of you say goodbye to Master Zenyatta, and when you're left alone, Genji's previous exuberance is gone, replaced with contemplation. Something on your mind, Genji? Just thinking about what my master said. He was being truthful, you know. Spending time with you has done a lot to help my own sense of self. But I have to wonder. Yunya, do you really think it possible to know your true self? Wow, to be honest, that's a far deeper question than you ever would have expected from the silly dating sim you signed up for. But you've come this far, right? What's the harm in one more question? That really is one more. I believe this will be your last chance to win Genji's heart. Use it wisely. What do you think? Can one know their true self? Mmm, I don't know. This is something that I've struggled with, too. We can try. Honestly, I don't know. Maybe you can or maybe not. But I think it's always worth it to try finding out who you really are. Otherwise, what's the point of it all? Yeah, I think that's a succinct way of putting it that I can agree with. No! I think you might be right. You know, when did I, when I ended up like this, when my brother trails off, Cupid watches him intently, his brows knit with pain. I felt so much guilt. I would look at myself every day and despise the person who looked back at me. But, as much as it hurt, I had to look, or else I could not have grown from who I was. Perhaps I will never know my true self, but you're right. I must always try to see who I really am. Thank you. I'm glad to know you feel the same. Yunya, I've really enjoyed spending so much time with you lately. It's been a long time since I allowed myself to get close to anyone. I must admit. I mean, what, Genji? I feel some guilt that you have not seen the real me. You're a bit confused. You're pretty sure you've just enjoyed three dates with the real him. But before you can ask, he clarifies. <gasps> I've been spending so much time together, and you've only seen me with my mask on. And although my mask is extremely epic, it's not the true me. It's really cool, though. I know, right? But still. Genji takes her hand into his. His green visor stares back at you, and you wonder what his eyes might look like beneath it. Just do a freaky jump scare. I'm kidding. <laughs> Can I show you who I really am? Of course. Accept that love. Genji puts his hand over his heart, shocked but not at all disappointed in your confession. After returning to reality, he chuckles under his breath. It's funny. Seems I could de deflect anything but love. <laughs> this game, Genji takes off the mask. Scandalous. And beams. But mostly love. 
I appreciate that this game is so self-aware. <laughs> Always thought of Genji as a really tough, but a soft boy on the inside. <laughs> yeah, he he definitely has that like the the tsundere to him. <laughs> With great care, Genji reaches for his mask, though he hesitates. He eventually builds the strength to remove it, showing you his true face beneath. Genji, you're beautiful! <laughs> if you believe so, then it must be true. It took me so long to come to terms with who I am now. Knowing you accept me makes me confident it was worth all that time. I know my true self loves you too, Yunia. <gasps> and we're in love forever. <laughs> you embarked on the journey of love and found what you desired at the end. Love takes many forms, but it's always true. May you cherish this love with Genji forever and always. <laughs> Be my pocket mercy. Alrighty. And now, a second time. Uh, let me play. Every time. Unissa. <laughs> Two! I was hoping it could be caps. No, well. Confirm. My name is Unia. No, I made a typo. Yes, I'm ready. Alrighty. It's Mercy Overwatch! Cute art. Genius doctor, genius scientist, genius inventor. No matter how many times you blink, she's still there. And you're completely... love struck. Did you know you had a thing for perfect, brilliant, kind, and beloved philanthrop philanthropists before? I, I didn't know I had a thing for being able to talk. <laughs> well, obviously you do. But your dating track record implies otherwise. Yeah, zero. <laughs> no, not zero, but essentially. ZAP! Hark, do I hear the sound of a heart beating fast and smell the sweat on your palms? No, but you do smell some mom's spaghetti again. I am Cupid, the hero of love in all its varieties. It's my sworn duty to answer the cries of all who desire love and guide them to fulfillment. Alright, can anyone see this or am I hallucinating? Only I can see him. It's time to woo... I think I'm in love with Mercy. <laughs> Kinda hard to tell. I'm here to guide you through all of its intricacies. What? I'm gonna give you advice. Okay. Do you wish to win the heart of Mercy? Yes. <laughs> I want to win the heart of Mercy. Mercy me! He arches an eyebrow. To win the heart, you must arm yourself with the power of knowledge. How much do you really know about Mercy? Wait... Was he actually setting up a trivia quiz here? I'm waiting. <laughs> Can I look up one thing on an Overwatch fan wiki first? Test my Mercy knowledge! Confidence, I hope it's well placed. What is Mercy's real name? Angela Ziegler, Miss Yunia. <laughs> Incorrect! Dr. Angela Ziegler. <laughs> okay, Cupid Hanzo Shimada. Stop that. What's her favorite food? Uh, the Tears of Careless DPS Heroes. Um. Um. The Tears of Careless DPS Heroes. That's quite dark. I like that. She will not do better. What is Dr. Ziegler's field of research? She has a PhD in Heroes Never Dieism. This is rigged. There are no right answers. Uh, 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 this is rigged. I know she's a pioneer in biotic technology, which is a field applied in nanobiology, and that she's got her MD and PhD in Switzerland. That's my favorite unicorn. I'm doing good. We're romancing Overwatch characters right now. How you doing, Malthus? Hope you're having a good day. We have completed- this is our, our third dating sim of the day. <laughs> We're just kind of powering through them, I guess. At a ridiculously young age, doing well? Good, good, good. 
She also became head of surgery at a prominent Swiss hospital, again at a ridiculously young age. You're so knowledgeable, illuminate me then, what would impress such a highly accomplished woman? <laughs> I tell her how many hours I clocked in Overwatch 2. Can't I just say hi? You can, with this mic. <gasps> testing, testing, mercy. I love you. <laughs> Click. Spotlight illuminates you. And Mercy turns her head. She's looking at you. <laughs> Hi. Everyone turns towards you. Mercy sits comfortably in back in her chair, expectant. She's waiting. I said hi already. Crowd clears their throats. Chairs squeak. She's waiting for a joke because this is a comedy club where you make jokes. Okay, here goes nothing. Which one? Do you want to hear my favorite joke about the periodic table, or why does the surgeon like operating on elbows? I think the second one might be more likely since she's so healer focused, <laughs> but who knows? Hmm. Save. We're going for it. Why does a surgeon like operating on elbows? You pause for dramatic effect. She swore to do no arms! The audience is silent goes beyond more mere description. It's a living being, vast, timeless, hateful, bears down on you with deadly intent. But she loved it! <laughs> then Mercy laughs, a full-on chain-snorting laugh. <laughs> Chain snorting, what the heck? The exhilaration hits you like a damaging, amplifying beam. A well timed resurrect. She should probably get her sinuses checked, though. She's just like me for real. <laughs> Sit down at a nearby table, glowing. Out of the corner of your eye, Mercy stands and heads over to you. But um, but um. Hello. Please don't talk to me or I'll explode. Hi, Dr. Ziegler. <laughs> I just wanted to say that was a very good joke. I'm glad I tickled your funny bone. That phrase is so strange. The funny bone re isn't really a bone. It's a nerve called the ulnar nerve, and it's responsible for the sensation in your fourth and fifth fingers, your palm, and... But of course, I understood your joke, which also was very good. Thanks. And the ulnar nerve trivia was also really good. It wasn't humorous, though. You're smart and funny OP. Quite humorous. You're smart and funny. Mobility and overpowered are not the same thing. A writer's note. Mercy was not met at the time of writing this. Please be merciful if she is by the time this releases. That was supposed to be a compliment. <laughs> I know. I'm just tired of being admired. Tired of love uninspired. Wasn't... Was that a reference? Yes. I'm surprised this made it past revisions. I am surprised the dating sim even exists. Indeed, that too. Speaking of dating sims, we should probably proceed to the next date. I was thinking of something fun, like dinner at a fancy restaurant. I'd love to join you. <laughs> Be you to it. They're on the same page. They're in our minds. <laughs> she smiles. You could die happy right now and she would just resurrect you back. Fantastic. I'll meet you at Cafe Azur at Circuit Royale. And she just flies away. <laughs> I can't believe it, you're gonna have dinner with Mercy tomorrow at- Wait a minute. Circuit Royale. That's not in Midtown. If you wanna make it in time for dinner tomorrow, you better queue up now. Oh ho ho, the meta jokes. How do you think things went? You did quite well, you anticipated her feelings and interests. You are off to a fine start. The first date is finished, but the journey ahead is long and fraught with peril. We will endure these trials together. So for all, there's gonna be like two more scenes. 
Luckily, the hopeful future of Overwatch has a very reasonably priced transatlantic train. You arrive in Monaco in a few short hours. Supercars zip by in the distance, the aroma of high-end dining wafts from nearby tables. The menu in front of you and you're cursing yourself for skipping French class all those years ago. It's exactly three minutes and two seconds past the time of your dinner date, and Mercy's still nowhere to be found. Maybe she changed her mind, maybe there's an interdimensional crisis somewhere she had to go, maybe... Maybe she's just running fashionably late. Three minutes and 57 seconds. Four minutes, 19 seconds. She must hate you. She hates us. Are you going to eat the breadsticks or just let them sit there? I'm so sorry. She's flustered, having rushed over here. I was working on a new dissertation. I wasn't keeping track of the time. Got here as fast as I could. Do forgive me. <clears throat> Only if I get a special thanks in your dissertation. <laughs> Whoa, Uni is a unicorn, not a narwhal. Whoa! I know, right? Who'd have ever thought? Narwhals are very good, though. Um, um. Ooh, woo, winky. Only if I get a special thanks in your dissertation. Perhaps. How much do you know about photon counting CT detectors? And how it relates to, uh, you know, biology. You are treading upon dangerous ground. <laughs> How about we talk it through during dinner? Yes! I forget I'm making up believable scientific facts. Have you ordered yet? This place does a fabulous beignet de fleur de... de cur courget. <laughs> Fried zucchini flowers. 10 out of 10 game. <laughs> you take a deep breath, nod, and look back at the menu. Chicken nuggets. Uh, uh, we'll go with this thing, the, the bircher muesli. Because having breakfast and dinner is one of the finer pleasures in life. It's true! And this was Mercy's recipe in the Overwatch cookbook. Do you like bircher muesli as well? Because I also love it. It's the best breakfast. Yes, it is, although we are having dinner. I don't let society's expectations dictate my preferences. Me either. Ooh, that does look good. Clusters of bright happy berries and a trail of green and brown nuts and seeds on a bed of white mush. Silence falls as you two eat. That awkward bit during dinner dates where you can't decide if you should converse or eat or talk while eating and risk spraying your day with freshly chewed food. Cupid groans. Are you truly such an amateur? Start a conversation! What do I talk about? Something about her. What have you been up to since Overwatch fell apart? Uh, uh, uh. I mean, I I love a person who is into their who who is passionate about stuff. <laughs> Ooh, I need healing. Third option is the best, is it? Oh dear. Uh. Tell me more about your dissertation. I may not understand, but I want to. <laughs> Do you understand the nuances of medicinal imaging and machine learning? Of course, I read scientific journals for fun in my spare time. You do? You do? Yeah. <laughs> Wonderful, I've been working on optimizing the resolution for imaging deep in tissue to a sub-sub-cellular level in real time. Reaching this level requires better contrast, improved electron microscopy, better samples, and better convex optimization algorithms for evaluating convex loss functions and just massive amounts of visual information. We're still not close to completing universal mode. As of the massive amounts of computer power, we need to calculate angular orientation of cellular protein complexes, and I'm now using a lot of big words that are frankly extremely scary, and wow, you're realizing now that I'm one of those once-in-a-lifetime geniuses, and I bet you're hoping that Cupid said something to bail you out here. <laughs> Fourth option would be, why did you not heal me? <laughs> Ooh, woo. I would change the subject to something you can easily understand. So what kind of hobbies do you enjoy? <laughs> I like volunteering at clinics around the world and collecting crystals. Ooh, she's a non-canonically, of course. <laughs> oh no, she's a, like, non-canonical healing crystals. My favorite's the Rose Quartz. Rose Quartz is pretty. It represents love, healing, and compassion. Aw. 
uh, it represents love, healing, and compassion, right? Right! You high five Cupid, Mercy looks at you concerned. You forgot that only you can see him. My godly knowledge and love does not cover how to recover from such tomfoolery. So helpful. Haha, <laughs> Rose Quartz, I remember Steven Universe, same. Just stretching the old Latismus Dorsey anyway. Uh, what does being a hero feel like? I guess I can do all of these. You know, no one believes me when I say that it's not that great as people think. The world saw me as Mercy, a guardian angel, noble and perfect, but I'm also just Angela Ziegler, I am not perfect. And when the world saw that, saw me, they were disappointed. I don't mind being Mercy, if the world needs her, then I will be there. But I wish... I wish they would also welcome Angela. Angela! <clears throat> wow. Fidget with your fork! <laughs> I need you, Angela! She chokes on her sip of water. The other patrons look over, oozing disdain at her gauche behavior. You discreetly slide a napkin towards her. You okay? Yes, I'm sorry. Nothing to be sorry about. She looks down, face still pink. Thank you for saying that. It's nice to hear. I was wondering. I'm volunteering at a clinic in Cairo tomorrow. Would you like to see Angela try saving the world? Cairo. Egypt. Bring back Anubis! I really can't miss it unless I stop here. She beams at you and soars away, leaving a lingering scent of perfection. Well, perfect to you. One way or another, that date is complete. Thanks so much, how did your night go? She seems happy with you, only through carelessness will you lose her heart now. There's still another date in your future, do what you can! I sense this one will be the most important of all! Third date time! Also diva in the background there, cute. It's no time to waste, as soon as the airship touches down in Cairo, it was straight to the clinic. Modest clinic, bright and clean. Angela hands you a pair of scrubs and she puts on a lab coat. As she tends to patients, you help as much as you can. Always mopped. Paperwork filed and sorted. Supplies stocked. You sit down in the break room, exhausted. <laughs> break room, exhausted. Angela enters. You straighten up immediately. Uh, uh, uh. You must be tired. I'll make you some coffee. She hands you a cup of something that looks like coffee. It smells like coffee, but it's definitely not quality coffee. So? Her genius did not extend to the barestorial arts, if such a thing exists. Uh, thanks. Be, be kind. You drink enthusiastically. It's endearingly revolting, but strong. Do you like it? Just what the doctor ordered. I know it's terrible, but there's plenty more, so help yourself. Your stomach gurgles in protest, but hey, it'll keep you awake. Yeah, coffee's coffee. <laughs> Every, I say as if I've ever drank coffee. <laughs> I was telling you that you're a great help. Keep it up. She leaves. Her compliment energizes you more than any cup of coffee. Back to volunteering. Head back into the clinic lobby, picking out coffee grinds from your teeth. Oh. Oh. You're quite the brave one. You recognize that quiet, right voice. You turn around and it's Moira. No, Anna. Makes sense. More sense. <laughs> no one has experienced Angela's coffee and come out smiling the other end. Anna, the Anna Amari, legendary sniper of Watch. Original of Watch Strike Squad member, the bane of most of your matches. What is she doing here? Actually, I mean, on a uh, console, not as much the bane of my existence. <laughs> Anna, what are you doing here? Are you hurt? Oh, I'm always aching somewhere. You know that. And who is this? This is Yunia, my... She blushes. Pink Mercy, trademark pink. I'm Angela's day! Eyes... <laughs> Anna's eyes pin Mercy in place. Dr. Angela Ziegler, are you blushing? Absolutely not, it is extremely hot here. Hmm. Her gaze pierces you. You know those eyes have seen the world's most dangerous criminals and their final moments. I've always told Faria to look out for someone who's not afraid to speak up. I'm glad you found someone like that, Angela. It was nice meeting you, Yunia. <gasps> I've got the honest seal of approval. She leaves. Angela clears her throat and avoids eye contact with you. Um, 
I'll see you when the shift ends. You're alone, wondering what just happened. Well done, you've impressed Anna Amari! Where the heck were you? Thanks for all your help! Thanks for all your help. It was a test and you passed. I feel proud to call you one of my disciples. I solo carried this whole day! Indeed, with my guidance. Don't forget to endorse me after this. Unbelievable. The important matter is you impressed a close friend. On his opinion of you will heavily factor into your fate with Dr. Ziegler. And speaking of fate, are you ready to see how your journey ends? I'm gonna run away and cry. Now I'm pretty confident. We will see. Do you have a moment? I want to talk about something with you. Run away. <laughs> She leads you to the top floor of the clinic where there's a rooftop terrace with stunning views of Cairo. I didn't know there could be a rooftop on this thing. But sure. Wow! Spectacular, isn't it? I come up here often after a long shift. You both take in the view of the city, the Nile sparkling orange from the setting sun, and the high-rise apartments and freeways gathered around its shores. What did you want to talk about? I want to say thank you for these last few days together. You saw me for who I really am, and instead of judgment or expectations, you gave me humor, compassion, and kindness. That someone like you exists in this world, it makes me want to believe in a little stronger. In it a little stronger. Fight for it a little harder. <gasps> I want to show you something. Take my hand. Come see this world from above as I do in all its beauty. I accept your love! I would go anywhere with you. She changed outfits. <laughs> the Valkyrie wings spread open. Angela takes your hand, takes your hand as you both soar into the clouds. You know, I've known many heroes, but you are mine. <laughs> this is my hero. There are many like it, but this one is mine. You've embarked on the journey of love and found what you desire at the end. Love takes many forms, but it is always true. May you cherish this love with mercy, always and forever. I love you more than Junkrat loves bombs. Cool. <laughs> huh. Close. But can we do it now? Time to try. Wait a moment. Where am I? We're in the realm of love, also known as Hanamura. <laughs> this looks a lot like that one 2CP map. <laughs> the the what map? You know, that old game mode from the before times. Bring it back! <laughs> Can you pause your brilliant wit for a second, please? Wait, one more comment. Uh, get it out of your system. Is this a secret ending? You would find out faster if you'd let me finish! Anyways. Before you give the secret of this dating sim on the internet, I must confess. Your devotion to winning the trust and respect of these heroes is admirable. You know, it's almost like I'm like, uh, two-faced two and willing to tell them exactly what they want to hear. <laughs> Not only have you brought love to their hearts, but to mine as well. Ew. Have this as a token of my respect. Hands you an arrow from his quiver. You take his gift. What do I do with an arrow? I don't know what to say, except... You were my soulmate all along. <laughs> I thought it was impossible for Cupid to find true love, but you make the impossible possible. Aww. Hey, shouldn't you be shooting me with this arrow? There's no need. You have already pierced my heart without it. We did it. We wooed them all. Cute, cute, cute. All of these people, good job. <laughs> good job, you guys. We we made it through. <laughs> Akupara Games. Kitty Face Software. 
everyone supporting Overwatch 2. All of these fonts! Yoon! Magazine Pro. Almost me. <laughs> Ooh! Oh, was I able to open them the whole time? In my bed. <laughs> Nerf Genji! Yeah. <laughs> Get the objective, you've captured my heart! Ew. We did it. Nope. Okay. <laughs> there we go. We wooed Genji a full-hearted effort. Okay. I guess there's more endings if you do other things, obviously. But yeah. We got the good ends. <laughs> and yes, Nerf Genji. <laughs> anyway. Congrats, we'd have a successful stream today, I dare say. Let's see here. If we just do that. We'll keep the sound up, because why not? As long as, you know, Blizzard doesn't bonk me. Huh! Hello. <laughs> Feels odd to be big on this screen, but we're here! Let's, uh, 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 what am I gonna say? Thanks for hanging out. <laughs> it was fun. I'm glad we could go through a few games together. And then, uh, let's see, your next stream will be Thursday. It's gonna be Theater Rhythm. And then the stream after that will be Monday. Yes, usually Sunday, but Monday this time because I have something else going on. But yeah. Right, hand tracking going. Hand tracking! Woo! <laughs> All I can do is the weird little kitty hands. Woo! Sorry, I keep bonking the uh, thingy. It was a fun stream. Thank you. I'm glad. Woo! It just really wants my hands to be like weird and down. Hands. 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 Hi. Huh. Huh. Whatever. <laughs> They're there. <laughs> it's fine. Oi. Alrighty. Let's go find someone to raid. So many people are streaming just right now. Let's see here. Ophelia's playing Overwatch, which maybe that would be about the best thing to go to. Why not? Let's do it. Let's raid Ophelia. <laughs> Time to raid. We'll give her some love. And I guess uh, hmm. we, we captured uh, uh, Hanzo's heart. We can rub it in. I'm kidding. I don't know. <laughs> Um, but yeah, let's get these raid messages. Um, raid one. Raid two. Raid one. If you aren't subbed, raid two if you are, or if you don't mind it just being goofy words instead of an actual emojis. Um, but yeah, I will see y'all in a couple days. Have a good week. We can do this. You got this. <laughs> Eat some good food. Stay hydrated. Um, and enjoy Valentine's tomorrow, today, when, when you watch this. <laughs> but yeah, goodbye for now. This has been a good day. Goodbye.